Hello everyone, it's Sean. You're watching Having Fun Repairs and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be probably a quick fix video format. Uh, I've got a little surprise in this box. Uh, an item that was given to my oldest son from his grandmother uh, that needs a little, little bit of love. So without further ado, let's dive into it. If you hear any music and TV in the background, uh, my daughters have accompanied me in my office today to watch a bit of TV. But uh, here we go. Nice little amateur uh, microscope. Not much to this guy if you're familiar with this product. Uh, like I said, I had, I think I said, I had one when I was younger and I, it definitely gave me uh, some hours of joy of magnifying and looking at things underneath the microscope. But, anyways, We have a few few things here. Uh, looks like there's already something glued to this glass, but uh, we have a couple glass slides. You have two canister type, twenty times in a six five multiplier um, lenses. You have variable lenses down here for magnification. Uh, those glass slides go underneath these guys right here to help hold them in place. Let's see. Adjustment here to help focus in whatever you're trying to look at. Underneath, and you, you'll get to see what the, the big issue is. Uh, we'll have to address this. This is where uh, two uh, AA batteries would have set. Obviously, our terminals are highly corroded. But uh, if we split this apart, in here you would have a, an incandescent light bulb, and then on the other side, a mirror in which you could reflect. Uh, ambient light say from an overhead light or even sunlight although it will be slightly diffused through here you don't want to completely direct sunlight into your eyeball but uh, the main thing is trying to see if we can get this incandescent bulb to work again get rid of some of this corrosion and clean it up So, let's just see if we can at least get some form of connectivity from these pads here to our light bulb. Alright, I flipped up my leads. Positive terminal there, negative terminal here. So areas that look like I've got bare metal on them. Let's turn on my variable power supply. And, uh, doesn't appear like I'm getting anything. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well. Well, we test the light bulb too. In order to do that, all you gotta do is unscrew this cap. And the bulb should unscrew. If you're interested in what my power supply is set to, it's uh, just under three volts. No different than what the voltage would be from those two double A's. It looks like the incandescent bulb is good. So that's one less worry. I guess I'll be toning out these wires to in here to see if we've got good continuity. Well, just testing for continuity. It appears that we still have continuity on our positive rail here. 
but uh, the negative rail seems to be the major, the major problem. Positive rail actually goes to the uh, the screw portion of the bulb. Negative rail goes to the center pin, I would believe. But at least, but at least I know where the positive rail continuity goes to. Baby is having a fun time, apparently. So, we're going to focus on uh, cleaning this up a bit. And hopefully this wire is still good. We can strip it back and reuse a portion of it. And finding a way to resecure this down to here. Paying careful consideration of these pads you see in here. Because they should be fully isolated from... Uh, these metal tabs because you don't want to because they are secure to the, the chassis of this and the chassis is metal uh, you don't want to short out uh, your batteries to the chassis that that would not be good and that's why you have these non-conductive pads uh, in between this metal tab here so that way you can insulate between what was originally riveted in which is metal and then a layer of insulation between that and the tab itself. So, nothing to get too excited about. This should be relatively easy to clean up. A little bit of vinegar, let it bubble, and uh, we'll resolder what we can. At minimum, these two should probably come off. The wires be stripped back a little bit, and then resolder those back on. And then we can test it again. All right, let me stop for a second and uh, explain to you what I'm seeing. I thought I could just clean up the terminals, clean up the inside, get rid of the rust, uh, resolder the wires, um, and, and it cleaned up re relatively good. Now I, th but um, we're still having an issue, uh, which I didn't realize until I took the ohm meter to it and tested some things after cleaning up the terminals and stuff. I thought that there was just a lack of continuity. Um, however, 
there seems to be um, zero uh, discontinuity anywhere. Here's our positive lead, and it comes to every termination point on this board, which I thought was plastic, but it's not. It's one piece of metal. And so, whereas these used to be insulated, where you'd put your batteries, now uh, it's just so rusted that they're every terminal point is connected together. So it's basically like taking the front of, an, of a battery and folding it on top of itself and connecting it to the rear end. So that being the case, we're going to completely disregard uh, discard this. It is uh, it is a hazard at this point. I don't feel like uh, getting rivets and redoing this at all and we're going to use something else uh, inside of here. Well, I've rem remedied the battery issue by mounting this battery pack to the back. Uh, it'd be nice if I still this still had the rubber cover. I believe it would have originally had. I left the the uh, nut and the screw in because that's actually the stop for the bottom of this, as that screw comes up and protrudes up in here, as you can see. Uh, however, it still doesn't illuminate the bulb. And that's because the same uh, type of grommet that would have insulated our negative terminal from a positive terminal has also worn out inside of here, as you will see when I touch these two posts together. Essentially, the negative terminal comes in and then it is soldered uh, to this connect this point right here. Let's see if I can turn it a bit for you to see better. We can put it up like that and you can see it better. And then this is supposed to keep this is supposed to keep it insulated from this chassis right here. As the B positive, our battery positive terminal, comes up and is physically soldered to this point right here. So the entire inside remains uh, in continuity with this post. And that is because when this is screwed in, you can see this metal plate right here going to the outside of this. Uh, this now becomes our pad for B positive to come in once it's screwed to the chassis. So there should always be continuity between those points. But anyways, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is uh, desoldering this wire from here and soldering it directly to this tab right here and then we'll call it a day.
Okay, so before anybody yells at me, yes, I understand the reason why that has a uh, little copper flange that came out that would touch the post internal to here. It's that way you could rotate this 360 without the wire inside starting to uh, spin up, uh, twist up, and eventually fray and break. Um, that being said, um, you know, this is something my it was a gift for my son. I mean, we'll be using it at our house with supervision. And so I understand that this can no longer spin 360 and that I need to be careful of how this wire is now permanently soldered to the center pin of this uh, socket. So, but anyways, continuity test out now. And I like the fact that you have a kind of an on-off switch for your battery uh, pack here and we'll screw the bulb in see if it works throw some batteries in here too and there we have it working just fine let's see if we can somehow demonstrate that through here as well. I'm going to put in the six time magnifier and uh, look through here with my eye. There we go. All right. Well, you should be able to see this light here, and now it's gone. Now it's back, and now it's gone. So hopefully that demonstrates well enough that this guy is working. Uh, the only thing left to do is to wipe off these lenses a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol, and then. Uh, I'll let my son play with it to see how he likes it. Hey, bud. Yeah. Oh, look. Can you come up here? Can you see that that light turned on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see in there? Yeah. I put fibers in there for you to see. Mm. Can you see them? Yeah. And then this can adjust up and down. You see how that focuses? Mm -hmm. You want to do it? You want to get it to focus? Yeah. Well, you got to look through it while you move it until it's focused in really good. Is that blurry or focused? Blurry. All right, let's go closer in. Oh, wrong one. That one unscrews. You got to use this side over here. Let me know when it's no longer blurry. Not blurry. Not blurry? Can you see those little fibers that are on this glass down here? Mm-hmm. Is that pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where can we find bugs? Uh, I guess we're going to have to go find some bugs and maybe uh, get some bug legs or some wings or something. We can look at them underneath the microscope then. Do you think that would be fun? <laughs> yeah. Does that cool little microscope for you? You happy with it? Give everybody a thumbs up. Well, what an absolutely fun little repair, hopefully, that fits the quick vi fix video format that I occasionally do and a lovely little uh, basic monocular uh, microscope analog microscope for my kids to enjoy as they learn more about hard sciences and stem related things and now uh, their interests can uh, from school can come home and we can do more things. That being said, uh, if you're new to this channel or not, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. As I state in my last handful of videos, I do business as having fun repairs now in the state of Oklahoma. But you can go to my business uh, page, link in the description, and I'm willing to accept almost any electronic device. Uh, that you're looking to have repaired 
Whether it's something as simple as this, or something more complex like a computer or gaming console. And if you're just enjoying this content and want to donate to this channel, I do accept donations via PayPal, and I appreciate those as well. That being said, thank you for watching, take care, goodbye. Mark?